All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's show. Uh, if you saw yesterday's video at 8 p.m., our daily vlog, uh, I was talking about uh, how a number of Conservative MPs, uh, from Steve Baker to Graham Brady, Charles Walker, a number of others, uh, have uh, raised concerns about the lockdown measures uh, now that the NHS capacity has been uh, maintained and uh, the numbers are going down, new cases and everything. Uh, they are now worried about the economic consequences, but also on a societal level with uh, people's mental health and everything. So today we're actually joined by Steve Baker, uh, and uh, he's going to be talking about uh, an article he wrote uh, yesterday in The Telegraph. Again, we mentioned that in the video yesterday, uh, where he's talking about how we need an exit strategy. He has been supporting uh, the government and Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, uh, and how necessary these measures were at first. Uh, but now it's time to slowly reopen Britain. Welcome to the show, Steve. Oh, thanks very much for having me on. It's really appreciated. No, so um, you've written an article in The Telegraph uh, talking about uh, the whole situation with the lockdown. And uh, you've been very consistent with your views. Uh, you supported, you're still generally supporting the government in terms of the necessary uh, actions that we have had to take because of what we're going through. Uh, but at the same time, you're you're still supporting um, well common sense and liberty and everything else economically and socially. Yeah. But you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is what this is all about, isn't it? And um, it's okay to curtail liberty to save life. I mean, that is one of the fundamental reasons why you can. So, I think in a pandemic, it's inevitable that the state rolls forward. Mm -hmm. We don't have to like it but we do have to think extremely carefully about what we're doing. We can't afford to be cavalier. Mm -hmm. I think if people cast their minds back, they'll remember that this was about saving hundreds, potentially yep. hundreds of thousands of lives. We couldn't allow the NHS to be overwhelmed, and that's why we went into lockdown. Yeah. But today, you know, we're hearing on the radio that the NHS Nightingale Hospital is being stood down. Uh, the number of deaths is falling. We're working towards, I think, meeting the Prime Minister's five tests. But what I'm trying to say to people is that on all sides of this argument, we can't afford to be cavalier because it's the economy that pays for the NHS. It's the economy that pays for care homes. If we do this quarter take a 35 percent hit to GDP, that is a devastating blow to all of our prosperity and our futures and we'll need to bounce back from it. So. We've got to look to the future and think about the balance of risk, even as I, like everybody else, am committed to prosperity. And that means health. And that means being very, very careful about how we come out. But we do need to come out. Yeah, with, with this, um, you're right. I mean, with this uh, article that you've written, and there are other colleagues that you have who've also raised concerns, um, you mentioned a few things. Uh, one thing was, uh, obviously, generally, we need, it's time now to reopen Britain. Uh, but you also mentioned um, the, the police measures. Uh, you gave an example of uh, in mid-March when there were guidelines, but no actual law in place, and the police were actually practicing that, and you were quite concerned. So if you could explain about that. Yeah, absolutely. So our freedom and our prosperity absolutely rests on how we do things. That is justice. Justice is in the process. So I don't mean to be critical of the police. I'm sure that even in the examples I've re referred to, police officers meant well. And certainly in Wickham, the policing has been really first class. I've had not one complaint and I couldn't be happier with the policing in Wickham. However, the problem is that the prime minister on the 23rd of March gave a press conference and said you know, he was instructing us stay at home. Mm -hmm. The police then, as reported by Big Brother Watch, then started implementing in, you know, enforcing that instruction. But it wasn't. And the, in fact, the government sent out a text message the next day saying new rules now in force. But it wasn't until the 26th of March that the rules were actually signed into law by Matt Hancock. And it's only today, this afternoon, after this interview, that those rules come as regulations, a statutory instrument before Parliament. So there was a period where we were governed without, in, in a way, lawlessly, because the law wasn't there to support the police action. And that's a big problem. There's also a problem that, um, for reasons I'm happy to get into if you like, that, that the law, the public health law that the government's relying on may not be adequate to require us to stay in our homes or to enable police to take us to our homes if we decline to go voluntarily. So that is also a problem, but I have to say it's more of a technical problem because it would have to be fixed yeah. in any event. And then there's all the other issues like um, people being told you're not sweating enough as you cycle, uh, you're not exercising, or walking's not exercise, or in one case, yoga's not exercise. And these things 
are absurdities, you know, being yeah. told you've sat too long on a bench. It is, it is uh, slightly concerning because um, I think one reason generally people have been okay with it is probably because uh, they, they actually have uh, faith and trust in uh, into the Boris Johnson's cabinet and the Conservative government, but we just happen to have a Conservative government. If we had a different government, you know, th these lawless kind of uh, activities would have gone slightly too far. And this is, this is why what you say is it's just based on principles. We just, we're lucky to have someone like Boris. If we had someone like Jeremy Corbyn, it, it could have gone too far. Yeah, of course, I agree with you. You know, I've got great faith in Boris. He enjoys my complete confidence. Mm. Uh, but we we shouldn't have a system where our liberties rely on having faith in the prime minister. That yeah. is, you know, for, we've worked for hundreds of years to avoid having such a system. This We want the rule of law. And that's why I'm going to make the case that I've just sketched later. What do, you, what, what do you think of the criticisms that some people are saying? These are the essentially uh, supportive uh, supportives of the lockdown saying that uh, someone like you is coming across as like a Puritan and uh, you're you're putting the ideology of liberty above uh, the practicality of the situation and what you're doing is might actually uh, kind of uh, make things worse. There's certain people who come up with conspiracy theories about and everything would be backing you instead of everybody else. Is that nonsense? <laughs> It's completely ludicrous. I think people who, anyone saying that about me, can't really can't stack that up. I mean, I've only just been on the world at one pointing out that I support these measures. You know, I just want out of them as soon as it's safe to be out. That is a moderate point of view. Calling for the rule of law to be upheld. I mean, I thought people wanted to avoid the rule of strong men by authority. And now they're saying to me, don't defend the rule of law. I mean, they need to make their minds up. So I would also say to them, We've got to pay for the NHS and care homes. And this is a super important point. If you, as I do, you represent tens of thousands of people. Um, you know, a hit to the economy as big as the one we're about to take is a threat to everything we hold dear. And if people care about the NHS and they care about care homes, well, we need the economy started up to pay for it. And people you know, should recognise I'm taking the moderate point of view that's a bit far sighted, but just cowering and Cowering at home, insisting we stayed locked down, is a recipe for devastating the economy yeah. uh, and ruining our futures. Yeah, what a world we live in that Steve Baker's a moderate. <laughs> I a moderate. I've always been a moderate, a moderate defender of freedom. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, talking about the exit strategy, you know, firstly, we got the five tests, and um, generally, like four of them we've already hit and it's going well. The, the fifth test, which is it kind of vague and it just says as long as there's no risk how do they actually assess that because it, it is quite vague isn't it that there's no risk to a well, second wave yeah so this issue of a risk mustn't have a risk of a second wave overwhelming the nhs that's always going to have a degree of uncertainty and it's very clear that epidemiologists disagree with one another because of the way this the swedish uh, situation worked out i think we have to be fair sweden's got very de different demographics and you know the, and so on than the uk but Epidemiologists do take different views, but I'm not going to try and gainsay that kind of expert advice. I just would observe that when the data is incomplete and uncertain, and experts view that data through different lenses, you end up that experts disagree. And so I think it's really, really important that the Prime Minister takes all the factors into account as we go forward. And um, of course, we mustn't have the NHS overwhelmed. But during this delay that we've had, this delay phase through the lockdown, we've built the Nightingale hospitals. You know, we've got massively more capacity. Now, I don't want us to have to use it, but I just recognise that the NHS is now much, much less likely to be overwhelmed because of the action the government's rightly taken. Yeah. Um, do you have any kind of um, suggestions in terms of... Uh how we should do the exit strategy uh, or have you heard anything from the government side in parliament that how they might do it essentially well i haven't had a chance to read them yet but i saw on twitter earlier that some of the documents have started emerging for workplaces uh, daily telegraph wants me not just now i'll go back to them it's probably because i criticized their headline writer <laughs> oh right wait, was it because he came across as he like you're attacking he boris quite, he, he, well he was working quite hard um now, the, the government doesn't tend to brief backbenchers uh, in that way because too many leak and um, civil service impartiality means all parties would have to be briefed at once. But it looks like it's going to be a slow process, especially with bars and restaurants. That's very, very bad news for that sector if it is slow. Um, yeah. But, 
yeah, this is the balance. The economy's got to be spun up, but we've got to look after people. So I, I, I like everybody else, will look very, very carefully. I think my concern is not just economically, because that's a, the biggest thing, obviously, is people's livelihood, but also in terms of mental health and everything. On a societal level, the social measures, um, if there was a way to find a, a solution to uh, get people who are, whether it's by antibody tests or something, or, or they're young and healthy, to be able to uh, see each other somehow, or their families, or their best friends or something, because a lot of people yeah. who are staying at home and uh, it is affecting everything. So even if they still have a job, but if they're unable to actually continue their lives on a mental level, then that's also yeah. a big problem. Of course it is. Yeah, life is more about more than work. It's more than about simply mm. existing. Um, you know, we, we're human beings. We need fulfillment. We need other people. There's a hierarchy one of my friends uses. It's not quite Maslow's. He puts it a different way. But am I safe is at the foundation. Mm -hmm. Who am I? Questions of identity as partly de defined by other people. Who cares? You know, relationships and friend friendship. What shall I do? Work. And then where shall I find joy? And actually to be human is to work across all five levels. Naturally, people get driven back to am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? But this is where the science and the medicine and the things we've learned are so important. Because when you look at when you look at the really tragic figures on who's being killed by virus, the, the reality is that it is older people and people with pre-existing conditions. Mm. So without wishing to, you know, absolutely, they wouldn't want to unnecessarily differentiate, but there is a case that you shield the vulnerable and you, uh, you start allowing people who uh, can survive the virus to to go back to work. The, 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 the last concern is that um, because the government's messaging has been so strong, because this is the same team that came up with the get Brexit done and also previously take back control, it's been so strong that stay at home uh, stuff that uh, people are now, and the media pressure, people are now afraid of actually leaving the lockdown. So uh, do you think that's also a struggle for Boris Johnson that you know, even if he wants to ease, he's kind of afraid politically, will people actually follow? <laughs> Well, that's a great point, right? So uh, I've got great admiration for Boris. Boris is a man who loves liberty. I mean, I'm sure he will have hated this. I texted yeah. him to say, look, if you've got to shut down our society to protect life, do it with a clear conscience, because I knew he'd be struggling with it. Um, so I'm sure he will want to open things up. But yeah, there, there is a danger that people won't follow. And when you're a leader, you can only lead people so far ahead of where they want to go. So that is a, a, a danger. But I have to say, I think that the chief scientific advisor, the chief medical officer, they've been really excellent. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if they come out and announce mm -hmm. that we've now learned a great deal more yeah. about the disease and these are the facts, and the facts mean we can breathe a sigh of relief and mm -hmm. start going out more, I think that people will follow the scientists as much as the politicians. Yeah, that's true. And hopefully we can actually um, catch up uh, after this whole chaos. Um, but uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Just final comments. You're welcome. Um, everyone, including myself, we're all going crazy with our hair. Your hair yeah. seems fine. <laughs> That's only because I've taken an absolute flamethrower to it. I, there's, there's wax on it. If I let it go, it comes out to about here. Brilliant. <laughs> In well, another couple of weeks, I will look like a full caveman. Well, great. Well, thanks again for coming on the show, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Oh. Yeah, thanks very much.